Well, good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us at Kenya House in Stratford, London, where we are profiling all things amazing, interesting, fascinating, uh, and even challenging about Kenya. And um, it's going to be a very interesting conversation today. Really happy to have with me here at Kenya House, um, Dr. Thomas Karioke. And this is fascinating. He's the director of the Institute of Primate Research. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That you know. Of the National Museum. Of the National Museums of Kenya, and we go straight to our yeah. team in Nairobi. With that, we're so happy to be joined in Nairobi by Dr. Edel Fara, um, who is the Director General of the National Museums of Kenya. Right next to him is Dr. Emma Mbua, and uh, Dr. Tari is actually a paleontologist. She's the head of Earth sciences at the National Museums of Kenya and uh, also with them uh, coming to us from Nairobi is Dr. Tom Karaoke who is a director with the National Museums as well. Welcome and we have I see some guests in Studio B. Would you please introduce yourself to us? Hello there, I'm uh, Anthony. Um, I'm uh, a very very interested participant in the um, anthro uh, paleo anthropological um, exploits that uh, the guys in the museum um, are about to um, talk about so thank you hello welcome welcome next to you <laughs> hi i'm susie um i've been to kenya before been on safari but um i think this sounds like a great opportunity to find out more about a different side of kenya so keen to hear about that excellent thank you and hi, I am, i'm sharon um from kenya i'm a kenyan citizen and uh, really proud of Kenya and looking forward to finding out more about what we have in Kenya. Thank you so much. So let's jump straight into the conversation. And, and Dr. I start with you right here. Um, in London, Kenya is known as the cradle of mankind. Now, this has been challenged recently. I think, you know, um, south of Kenya, there have been those saying that uh, perhaps it's not. Let's put this in context. What was the discovery made in Turkana, and what does it mean in terms of positioning Kenya as the cradle? Uh, thank you, Julie. And, uh, I mean, this is a great opportunity. And, actually, since we are arrived here in uh, Kenya House, I have to say that uh, Turkana boy have been one of the major attractions. Uh, and um, but for me personally, it's actually been uh, quite exciting to stand beside him here and kind of be transported back in time and place. And really, to Kanaboy, um, the guys from the National Museum of Kenya, my colleagues, um, have a lot of details about the Kanaboy. But what he's saying is that he is probably the most important fossil uh, of our time in terms of presenting human origins in terms of the significance of Turkana. Let's remind people when he was discovered, who yes. discovered him, and just to let you all know that Turkana Boy is here on display at yes. Kenya House, and yes. once you walk into Kenya House, he's like in the main display as yeah. you start. Yeah. Um, so it really is amazing. People yeah. walk in and the first thing you see yeah. is, is the history of the world yeah. really yeah. there with Turkana Boy. Yes, but yes. Two, two Kenyans, uh, uh, Kamwaya Kemeo, and Kamaki Mel working in an ex expedition that was led by Richard Leakey. I mean, everybody of my colleagues uh, in the museum, when you mention those two names, then, you know, they get excited about Kamaya Kemel and Richard Leakey, 1984 in, in Turkana. 1984. And um, let me come to National Museums of Kenya right now with this. You allowed us to display what really is an amazing heritage here. What's the message you are therefore sending to the world? Because this is a, a huge investment um, of your time and effort uh, doing this. Let me start with you, Do Dr. Ido Farah, please. Thank you very much, uh, Julie. First of all, warm greetings from Nairobi and from the National Museums of Kenya Yay. to the team at Kenya House in London. Thank you. We also want to send our warm Greetings and goodwill to the Team Kenya that is participating in the Olympics that has brought all this uh, Kenya House London to us. Uh, the National Museums of Kenya, Julie, is uh, one of the public institutions that is the custodian of the Kenyan heritage. Uh, but in addition to being the repository or the bank where we deposit all our heritage, uh, the National Museums of Kenya also undertakes cutting edge research in providing information on various aspects 
from biodiversity to prehistory to cultural and ethnographic uh, research. Uh, today, uh, as the Kenya House in London uh, presents Kenya as an investment destination, the National Museums of Kenya would like to present another first, which is to say that uh, as the Curiosity rover lands in Mars, looking for life in Mars, this is where life on Earth started. Wow. Actually started in Kenya. And we're not doing this out of fiction, we're doing it out of a marketing gimmick. We're actually using scientific evidence that is available to us to explain that life probably began in the East African region and probably in Kenya uh, at Lake Turkana Basin, as we will be hearing uh, from our scientists. The Rift Valley, the Great Rift Valley, has been the source of a lot of the fossils uh, that have told the story of human evolution and how life all started in the world. And Kenya uh, hosts that very unique collection. And today we have renowned paleontologists, scientists, who are also Kenyans by their own right, Dr. Emma Mua and Dr. Chalo Muthi, to tell us some of this evidence that is in place and then we will also have to connect all this to the livelihoods of Kenyans and how Kenya can be a destination for visitation. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, thank you. That's amazing. I love the, you know, drawing the link between Mars and the, you know, everything that's happening around uh, that and, and of course the history of mankind. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Dr. Mboa, please. Give us the science bit. Yeah, um, Kenya is a house to a very large collection of Alima. We currently have uh, 1,000 uh, remains of Alima dating between 6 million and 1 million. Out here we have about five species of Alima. Uh, the Trukana boy belongs to this group on the left here. Uh, these are known as a homo erectus. That's why we know them. I wonder if we could just, I don't know if someone is with you and can make sure they focus the camera on the, 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 fossils. the fossils as you speak. Is someone there who could do that? Yes, we have a cameraman here. If you would, thank yeah. you so much. That's what we want. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. All right. Um, Trukana Boy has uh, been mentioned and is our attraction there in the Kenyan house. And on my left here, we have that species, which we all know as Homo erectus. Homo erectus lived in uh, Kenya around 1.5 million years ago. Uh, their body species were just like what we have in modern humans today. Looking at the Trukana boy in, in the house there, you can see his limbs. They are very close to what we have. So Homo erectus at 1.5 closely resembles us as Homo sapiens today. His brain was a little bit uh, larger than uh, the rest of the Aliman uh, collections which you, you see on the right here. Uh, out here, as I said, we have about five species uh, which Kenya really boasts in. We have uh, basically more species than, than, than uh, you know, others in the region. And uh, that strengthens our position into us being the cradle for humankind. And uh, further to that, we have a, a fossil which is almost six million years ago. That is the time when we expect man to have stood upright six million years ago. And uh, we delight in having that collection here in Kenya, uh, showing that you know man first stood probably in this region uh, six million years ago. So that kind of evidence is not found in anywhere else, but uh, we are quite happy to have it here in Kenya. On top of that, we had uh, other species which were quite, uh, 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 which had a, a specifically small brain. Uh, our line as the humans, uh, we, we have large brains. Probably that is what really made us succeed in life. While those who did not have a, a bigger brain at the same time, they got, uh, you know, they got extinct or perished. Mm -hmm. So. Homo erectus is in our lineage and uh, is quite an important discovery for Kenya and the world over. 
and uh, on top of uh, that it provides enough uh, information to show that um, early man physique and the morphology closely resembles uh, modern humans today. Thank, thank you. Um, let me come to uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Martin next to you and, and ask this question because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what I'm wondering. Are those replicas or are those the actual fossils? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> how, how are you protecting this heritage? Are those, are, do you have to keep the fossils in certain conditions to assure that they last the next few decades and centuries, are those actually the real fossils or re replicas, <laughs> please, Dr. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Julie. I want to say that these are replicas. The Thank only they are cast or duplicates of the original. The only we have is only this one, which is an, an original Homo sapien, you and I. Uh, but I want to tell you that uh, the original specimens are kept in one of the most securest places in this country, in a, a safe, uh, what we call a strong room. It's very, very secure. There are treasures of our ancestry. There are treasures for Kenya. There are treasures for the world. So we keep them very, very securely, and we, we have very minimal access to the original material. Fantastic. Thank you for that. I'm sure a lot of people were wondering, um, so I just had to bring it in. Let, let's talk about what uh, Dr. Farah mentioned, which is how do we use this rich heritage to increase our, um, you know, whether it's the capital coming into the country, whether it's investments into the country, so things like tourism around this heritage and this history. Uh, Dr. Farah, what's going on in terms of trying to use this to leverage the growth and development for the country? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Julie. Um, as you may be already aware, uh, under the Vision 2030, which is the blueprint for Kenya's development, the idea is to diversify the products that Kenya is selling to the rest of the world in terms of tourism destination. And a number of issues have been floated within the Vision 2030, including ecotourism, cultural tourism, and so on and so forth. For us at the museum, where we undertake prehistory research, we would like a situation where the paleoanthropology sites, or the sites where these fossils have been recovered from, are open to the public in a way that they can understand and relate to those sites in terms of interpretation, access, and um, uh, put in amenities that will allow people to spend over uh, in these sites. So right now we're looking at a number of sites within the uh, Rift Valley of Kenya, uh, beginning with a site to the south of Nairobi called Olerbe Saile, and then up further north uh, to Kariadusi, Hyrax Hill, and the Crown Jewel, which is really the cradle, and that is the Lake Turkana Basin. And under the uh, Vision 2030, we are undertaking the Cradle of Mankind project, uh, also known as the Eden project, that will open up all these areas for tourism and for people to go and relate to their ancestors. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, just to add on what Dr. Farah has said, the message we have been passing here to the visitors to Kenya House has been one which maybe has an analogy with some of the historical sites elsewhere. So if you imagine people would visit the state of Israel to for it, go and look at historical sites, we are saying that we would actually like to see numbers and diversification of our tourist product going to the north, going to the Turkana Basin, to actually visit the cradle of mankind in a way that they are paying pilgrimage to the genesis of humanity. To the journey that mankind has to the taken. That and, mankind has taken. And, and yesterday we were discussing a tourism here yeah. and, and we were highlighting some of the most beautiful parts of Kenya. Yes. There's so many, but Turkana yes. definitely is one of them. So the Eden project sounds yes. like a, an absolutely amazing project. So on that note, let me come to uh, our second booth here at Kenya House and everybody in there. So from what you've heard so far, what are your thoughts and comments? And do you feel that a tour of you know, this, this heritage of mankind is something that 
would sell, would you be interested in doing that? Um, let's start with uh, the lady in the middle who's nodding her head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was going to be one of my questions, whether you could visit Turkana and see where um, the Turkana boy was originally found. So that's really great to hear. Um, and I'd also be interested in finding out what is there also to see at the National Museum. Okay, great, great. Absolutely. absolutely. I'll bring those questions to the team in a moment. Um, uh, yes, uh, let's go to the other lady and the gents first. I'll give the ladies... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. thank, you. thank you, Julie. For me, as a Kenyan, it's, it's Sorry, you've just frozen for a moment. Okay. Okay, I think we'll we'll definitely come back. We'll come back to them in just a moment once it unfreezes. Um, but you know that question was very important. What else is there to see? at the National Museums of Kenya, and I'll go back to, to Nairobi for that. Um, because there's, 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 there is quite a bit to see. I also would like to know when exactly, is it possible even right now to actually tour um, you know, the site where, where the, you know, the Turkana boy was found, or is that something that is a work in progress? So if you could answer both those questions for us, Dr. Edel, or your team. Yeah, Julie, um, the site where the Trucana boy is is not accessible at the moment, but uh, other than to researchers themselves, um, it's work in progress that we're trying to make um, it, it, to ensure that these places are accessible, both online as well as physically uh, accessible. But, Give us a timeline. Uh, offer, For anything offer, interested, do you have a timeline on that? Six months, <laughs> eight months, a year? It's a three-year project, actually, because it requires very heavy infrastructure okay. in terms of roads, airports, rail, and so on, because this is really three days drive by a four-wheel drive from Nairobi. You can imagine it will take us a bit of time to get all the infrastructure in place. But we have a lot to offer. I mean, we have 24 museums across the country that are accessible to the public uh, every day of the year, all the uh, including Christmas, they are open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. Uh, we also, within the Nairobi National Museums, uh, have the fossils that we've talked about, the biodiversity of Kenya, we have the cultural diversity of Kenya, we have the history of Kenya, all displayed in different museums. Uh, a number of the outside museums concentrate either on the scientific aspects on the cultural aspects, depending on which museum you visit. But all the major towns in Kenya uh, have a museum that you could actually uh, visit. But in addition to that, the museum takes care of six World Heritage Sites in this country that are listed on the UNESCO World Heritage List as outstanding sites of universal value that could be visited by anybody across the world. I think those are very, very critical an important heritage right. that we're keeping for the Kenyan people and the world at large. Okay. Thank you for that. We're back. We're back with uh, our other booth. Sorry about that. There was a bit of a freeze. You were asking a question. Please go ahead. Oh, could you start again, please? Sorry, could, could I ask you to start again, please? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, for me it was just a comment, uh, very excited as a Kenyan, mm -hmm. to know that there's so much more uh, other than the safari and the beach that is always advertised. So it's very exciting and as a Kenyan, of course, pulling more people towards museums, visiting to see the history and uh, the findings that we have as a country. So I'm very excited as a Kenyan. Thank you. Thank you for that. And to the gentlemen. Last but certainly not least. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, obviously very interested in uh, coming over to Kenya, Kenya to, uh, to, to see some of the existing fossils, uh, like the, the Takana boy, for example. Um, but I'd be uh, very, very interested to maybe go out to the site and uh, you know, find out how, how deep uh, Takana boy was, was found or buried. And maybe even going out and actually having a look for some of these fossils myself with some of my friends. Is that a possibility <laughs> at all? 
I, is, is that, Dr. Farah, is that one of the concerns that even as tourists come, there yeah. needs to be an area that they cannot perhaps <laughs> Or, or, or would you be interested in partnering with universities and perhaps experts or people who have a passion for this to allow for certain digs uh, to take place? That the possibilities are in that, in fact, and, and that's what we are currently working on. But there are already sites that are available, that are uh, accessible, uh, including, as I talked about, Olegi Saile, uh, Hyrax Hill, and Karindusi. And these are places where you can actually do real time uh, as, as a visitor, uh, interact with the fossils, the stone pools, and so on and so forth. So uh, while we welcome the gentleman to Turkana to do this, of course at a notice because we cannot just fly to Turkana every day. Uh, this, this has to be arranged well ahead of time. But there are places you can go to much nearer Nairobi and, and still have the same experience. But, but there is a dream and a vision, and I hope you know we can confirm this from yeah. your end, that one day we will be able yeah. to yeah. drive into or fly into yeah. Turkana, that security will not be an issue, that the area will have developed around ecotourism, around tourism, and around this heritage uh, tourism, I don't know if that's what it would be called, yeah. uh, because certainly even in terms of... Um, the, the area, is, is the rustic beauty yeah. of the area really lends itself to tourism and, and you know, it, Dr. Edel, is this a hope that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And of course, we, we have to work out this very, very carefully because uh, uh, if, if we do it the wrong way, then it will not be sustainable. So we, we have to look at uh, sustainability of having millions of people getting to these very fragile sites in terms of the ecosystem and the environment. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we have to arrange it in such a careful way that people can access these places without necessarily uh, destroying the environment uh, surrounding it. And then maybe Jury, Do Dr. Manzi or uh, Emma can comment on this, but for academic and research purposes, mm -hmm. actually we do have collaborations with international okay. universities and we enable them to actually visit these sites, uh, you know, working with us hand in hand uh, to actually explore these possibilities. Right, Dr. Taris, please come in here on that. I mean, e even a young individuals who say, listen, this is a passion of mine, or institutions, what, what is possible right now? Um, right now we host uh, quite a large number of uh, research expeditions to some of the sites we have discussed about. Uh, every year here at the National Museum, we, we receive international scholars to do collaborative work with us here at the National Museums of Kenya. Uh, we go to the field for the purpose of uh, collecting fossils, again in collaboration of uh, international uh, institutions as well as local ones. And uh, students are also welcome. Uh, we, have a, we are running field school whereby those who do not have a background in this research can get to know what goes on in the field of paleontology. And uh, uh, the numbers of uh, people coming here to look at the material and to study for their doctorate, masters, and uh, just to create an interest in this research is quite a number. Every year we receive uh, close to 200 international scholars coming just to look at the material at the National Museums of Kenya. Thank you. Sorry, there's a bit of a sound issue there. And uh, let me come to one, one more question, um, which is um, looking at our heritage and even now with the Mau Mau case here in the UK, um, in terms of capturing moments around our colonial history, around the struggle for independence, is there anything being done that you'd like to tell us about perhaps? Because these are some of the things that would be quite important also to preserve. Uh, uh, Julie, of course, a lot, a lot, a lot is being done. Um, and this is not a one institution issue. It's a government-wide as well as a private sector collaboration um, in terms of securing the history of Kenya, uh, in terms of documents, in terms of artifacts, in terms of individuals who have played a big role in the shaping of Kenya as a nation. Um, as you are aware, uh, right now, uh, as we go towards celebrating 50 years of independence uh, in 2013, we are actually putting up a lot of the historical documents together with the National Archives and other media houses 
to ensure that we bring an exhibition that tells the Kenyan history from a Kenyan perspective. Uh, because a lot of Kenyan history has been written, uh, but a lot of those that uh, history has been written uh, by individuals who come externally from Kenya. Right. Um, the whole issue, of course, of Kenyan heritage being outside of Kenya is also a very thorny, very controversial, and very long um, issue to deal with. Uh, there are international laws that uh, uh, guide in terms of repatriation of some of this uh, uh, Kenyan heritage that's outside of Kenya at the moment. Uh, those are issues uh, probably that we will be dealing with uh, in coming years as we discover what is out there that is Kenyan. Thank you. Thank you so much. A little bit of sound uh, issue there. So we're going to come to, we see that Joe Mosheru has joined us in, in, in Nairobi. And Joe, if you can hear me, I mean, you know, Google has taken over information in the world. It provides information to everybody. And I guess what we're talking about right now is capturing information <laughs> and using um, our history to, to leverage Kenya. What are your thoughts on this whole discussion? So, um, so first, uh, Google hasn't taken over information. We, <laughs> we, we index information and uh, make it uh, universally accessible with uh, our mission. And I think, you know, having been in, uh, in Africa and worked with Google now for over five years, one of the key things that's been clear is we don't have a lot of information from Africa and from Kenya. We, we tend to consume a lot of the information once the Internet is been brought from the rest of the world. And so part of the challenge that we have even as Google is to see how much more information can we actually get uh, online from the various uh, information owners in the, in the country. So in Kenya, for instance, the government has huge amounts of data and huge amounts of information that people are interested in. But most of that, even if it's uh, digital, is not actually made uh, available online. Although recently we saw with the open data you know, from the government, that's, that's beginning to happen. So, so I think there's still a lot for us to do um, compared to the rest of the world in getting the information out there. There's opportunities of us being able to monetize you know, this uh, information once we put it online. So I think that's one of the big fears that people have, that it's going to cost too much uh, to put this information on, and then how do we get that money back? I think there's many publishers that are showing that there's ways of getting the money back, and if it's the government, it's, it's one way of reaching to the, um, you know, to the electorate, to the, to the citizen, who, again, if they come to the government, they maybe things are printed or put on DVD, which is much more expensive than if they actually just put this information online. So we need to put as much uh, of the content online as possible. That will encourage more people to go online. We'll see a, a much larger digital economy, uh, and there'll be growth in, in many different aspects. Uh, including the advertising business. So I'm looking forward to seeing more content actually from Kenya, you know, going online and competing even with the rest of the world. And perhaps, Joe, the biggest thing is the cost of not putting the content out there and losing mm. some of this content forever. It, it, it would be a really great cost. Just to let you all know, um, that that's a picture we have right there of uh, the, the Turkana boy on display here in London and uh, people really walk in, take a good look and say this is where, this is where we came from, this is where it all started. Um, we're joined also by Wads, uh, Wadzanai Madziva, share your thoughts with us <laughs> in Nairobi. Hi, hi Chima. Hi, how are you doing? Very good, very good. What questions and thoughts do you have for us today? No, I think uh, generally, first of all, I think this is fantastic what we're doing. I think it's great that we are immortalizing ourselves. I think that's one of the main things that uh, probably is coming from the National Museums, for us to be able to leave a legacy, to be able to share how we have evolved. So, for instance, what we are doing today, and maybe just building on what Joe was saying, what we are doing today and in this lifetime, what efforts are we making to immortalize it as well? so that the generations after us have something to look back at. It's very easy to look in history. It's very difficult to create history or memorable and actually offer that as information and content for others to 
because you take it for granted since you're in the moment. Mm -hmm. So I think our efforts in creating information that is not just for our use now, but can be used as reference for those that come generations ahead of us, as we've had the benefit of seeing the two kind of voice. So those are my comments. I think there's a lot of opportunity, and I think we have advanced significantly in technology to actually be able to avail that information globally. Thank you. I, I, like, I like the choice of words. I mean, we are immortalizing, uh, you know, our evolution and our legacy and our human origins. And you know, in a way, um, it was predicted by Charles Darwin, who is, of course, uh, you know, the British scientist who is regarded as the father of evolution and who can actually work out the theories of human origins. He actually predicted that uh, the story would begin in Africa. Even at the time when he was doing this in the 1800s, mm -hmm. there was not a single human fossil that was available. And yet he predicted and told his colleagues, if you want evidence for human origins, yeah. go to Africa. Oh, they, they disregarded him a bit and went to Asia. <laughs> but eventually the scientists, including now those from the National Museum of Kenya, my colleagues, yeah. have actually proven over and over and over again that really this is the cradle of mankind and this is a unique legacy for us and we are custodians on behalf of the entire humankind. So I, I like the challenge that we have now of how do we digitize all of this, how do we make it available, how do we you know, share this information with the entire world. Right. Uh, at this point, I, I just get a final statement from everyone who's with us on this issue. And, and let me start with uh, the team from the National Museums of Kenya. Um, Daktari, let me begin with you, and then uh, Dr. Farah. Um, and then we'll go to the people who've joined us uh, from various different places and we'll finish with uh, Dr. Karaoke here. Please go ahead from Nairobi. Thank you very much. I think I just want to tell everybody who is participating in this Hangout that you are welcome back home, wherever you are, whether you're Japanese, whether you're American, this is where we were all born. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure once again to reiterate that uh, Kenya is the credo for humankind. And I would like to also reiterate the inv invitation to all humanity to visit Kenya because it's where, this is where all it all began. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to say that uh, this is where we all began. Uh, we moved from Africa and Kenya around 1.8 million years ago. But humanity began in Africa. It began in Kenya. So welcome back home. Thank you very much. Asante Sana, thank you so much. Uh, let me come to you, Joe. Yeah, um, so I think for me the, the excitement is that first of all we are having a hangout with the National Museums of Kenya. I think that, that's a massive step forward. Mm -hmm. um, we, we found, you know, for instance, the creation of mankind, I'm not sure whether you covered this or not. Right now if you go online, most of that is uh, South Africa. And uh, and I think we need to take steps to to correct some of those uh, mm. either truths or untruths to make sure that uh, that we're online. But I think it's it's a it's a great step, and and I'm very excited about the the opportunity we have. The the tools that we have also as Google, like Google Maps, uh, YouTube, that allow us to be able to even allow people to travel virtually to some of these places are available for the national museums if you want to even take this further from a digital perspective, and these are available even on the mobile phones. So mm -hmm. exciting times for Kenya ahead, uh, even after the elections, I think we're going to see so much more from the digital perspective. And I think even as much as there is oil in Trukana, there's a Trukana boy, there's all that, there's plenty also online. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for that. What, in Nairobi? Hi. So I guess my, my last words are, Basically that I think we have seen history and we are enjoying the benefits of the history that we are learning and I think we should continue to create history and continue to grow the, the, the wealth of knowledge that we have and utilize the tools at our uh, disposal in doing so, so that we have a legacy. Thank you, yes, absolutely. Let's come to our booth, our second booth here at Kenya House. Please go ahead with your thoughts. So I think we're all very, very much looking forward to uh, coming back to our roots, uh, back to Kenya. And not only in person, but also digitally. You know, we're very much looking forward to seeing some, some things online, 
uh, particularly about the cradle of humanity and, and potential places that we can uh, go and dig ourselves. <laughs> so. Great, thank you. Yeah, I think, I think it's really exciting and I think it's great plans, which is obviously really good for tourism. Presumably will create more local jobs in Kenya um, and I'm sure it will have global interest and get more people visiting Kenya over years to come. It's really exciting. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, for me, I'm really proud as a Kenyan, I would say, and looking forward to traveling to Turkana and uh, visiting the museums. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Um, it's been exciting, uh, Judy, because some of the visitors who come to Kenya House have actually been you know, amazed and awed by the, the, the Turkana boy. Mm -hmm. And the inquiries, even from potential investors, have been very positive. And, and so when I go back home, I'm going to you know, give a very good report to my colleagues about what needs to be done as the next steps to meet with the reality, so that instead of just welcoming academic and researchers uh, into the true kind of basin, we actually will develop the concepts and then develop the infrastructure to welcome all of humanity to that part of our world. Yeah. And just to finish off, did you call it the Eden Project? <laughs> the Eden Project, what a name. Yeah. And you can just imagine what a project like this would, would yeah. be. Yeah. And, you know, just to say, the last time I was in Turkana where, you know, it was very dry and of course there was food scarcity, um, as we drove through the very rough but beautiful terrain, mm -hmm. I looked around and thought to myself, what an amazing place. And I can't wait for the day that people can come here to celebrate the cultural diversity and richness that is here. Yeah. The beautiful lake, but Turkana is a big area, yeah. even where the lake isn't, yeah. where it doesn't exist, and yeah. other parts of Turkana, absolutely beautiful, but also imagine the richness of that whole concept of the Eden Project. So we wish you, as the National Museums, all the best. We are looking to you to execute this for us. And as we've also, also mentioned here, the issue of content and putting this information online, keeping it alive is so critical. So thank you all for joining the conversation. Hats off to you all. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.